podcast with my friends Kyle, Tom, Dave is out sick today, and we today we have an amazing guest, Miriam Tahan. She is um, an expert in kernel networking, in DPDK, in XDP, in eBPF. Um, really fortunate to uh, get to listen to her. Uh, I'll talk about some of these things today. So really excited. Hey, Miriam, how's it going? Great. How are you guys all keeping? Doing well, doing well. Welcome to the show. Um, Thank you. Yeah, I, I know that. Uh, so yeah, we're, we're, we're all super excited to uh, go further down the EVPF rabbit hole. Um, if you aren't familiar with EVPF, uh, we've got a good um, recording from a few months back with Thomas Graff. Have a look at that if uh, if you're interested. So we're definitely turning up the, the nerd knob to uh, 11 today because uh, this is this is low level and it's uh, super complicated and it's kernel networking. So, um, but we love yeah. that. <laughs> yeah, buckle buckle up, folks. <laughs> Yeah, so absolutely. first off, yeah, <laughs> ma'am, just, you know, take it, you know, so this is, you know, take it towards the, like, average network developer, network operator, and, you know, like, what, what in X, you know, what's the difference between eBPF and XDP? What's the difference between AF XDP and uh, regular XDP? So we've got a lot of acronyms going out there. Maybe. And what's all the fuss about? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, well, uh, let me tell you. Um, a lot of time you hear uh, you hear about this bus from the point of view of, of infrastructure, but today I'm going to focus on it from an applications point of view, and I'll try to uh, simplify it as much as I can. <laughs> Obviously, if there's any any more questions and people want to send uh, send their in questions to me, there I'm happy to reply over Twitter or Reddit or whatever. You'll find me under Mariam Tan or Mtahan. Um, so XDP is actually an eBPF program that allows you to um, introduce uh, an in-kernel uh, fast path, if you like, um, that are essentially hooks um, either within the context of the Linux networking stack or on the driver itself. Um, so XDP will allow you to intercept a packet early on within the um, receive path of a packet or, uh, through your network interface uh, and redirect that packet either to user space or to the Linux networking stack uh, as, as the simplest form. Uh, or of course, you know, one of the original applications of, of XDP was uh, essentially to, to drop packets um, to prevent uh, DDoS type attacks. Um, from the point of view of AFXDP and what that actually is, uh, to simplify it, I would say AFXDP is a socket that attaches to uh, a NIC queue. Uh, the role of XDP is to actually redirect the package from the uh, net network interface, to, uh, you know, the physical driver, I guess, uh, to the actual socket that's supposed to receive a packet. So, you know, I go AFXDP is the highest level um, API or interaction point that you could have. Uh, in user space with an XDP program. An XDP program lives in the kernel and you know intercepts packets either within the kernel stack or on the on the networking driver itself. So Miriam, um, it sounds like so XDP so so eBPF is there's like layers of, of eBPF in the <laughs> kernel, right? Is that one way to think about it? And XDP yeah. is somewhere in that layer, right? Yeah, absolutely. I guess in the word of uh, in the words of Donkey from Shrek, you know, it's an onion. <laughs> you got to peel it back, and uh, you got to interact with the outside layers before you get into the inside layers uh, to a certain extent. Um, the real the real interesting part about AFXDP, um, and I, I guess XDP itself, is that uh, you know there's no custom drivers. You're actually taking advantage of things that are already in the kernel. And that's where the distinction, or that's where I would draw a distinction with delivering packets um, to user space with an in-kernel fast path versus the likes of DPDK and VPP. With DPDK and VPP, you have completely custom set of kernel drivers uh, from the off, and you assume full control of the, the, the net dev. 
um, with AFXDP, you know, you, you can now decouple the actual application um, API interacting with sending and receiving packets from the lower layer infrastructure. Um, and that's, that's part of actually the power of AFXDP, I think. Um, the fact that XDP and AFXDP uh, work with any driver today because of the fact that you can inject it into different layers along your networking stack, make it really portable and um, flexible. So you can land on any platform uh, in any cloud provider you like. Um, you know, you can still take advantage of the same API with your application to send and receive packets. And um, the performance is actually also really promising um, and, and very interesting to see uh, how that's grown over the last year and a half. So, uh, depending on where you inject your <laughs> XCP program, I guess, uh, you know, we, we call it operating in copy or zero copy mode. Zero copy mode would be the, the fastest or most accelerated um, uh, path for your packet, for delivering your packet, uh, because it's, it's a hook right on the kernel driver itself. Um, and when your packet comes in, it's automatically pushed up into user space uh, using a <laughs> memory mapped uh, chunk of memory that's shared between the kernel uh, and the user space application. Um, you know, there's other more little intricacies that come along with AFXDP. Um, it, it's not just simply sharing, uh, I guess, uh, a chunk of memory with the, with the kernel driver. Uh, it also attaches these four rings um, that allow you to uh, avoid the overhead of syscalls. So there's just a TX ring, an RX ring, um, a fill ring, and a complete ring. And all these rings do, it, it sounds over, overly complicated, but all these rings do score, store descriptors into this chunk of memory uh, that actually stores the real packets. Uh, so you're constantly um, just referencing packets through these descriptor rings from your user application side. Um, and again, when you're uh, the, and on the kernel side, then it's consuming the information from these rings or filling parts of the, uh, parts of the information to those rings. Uh, and you're just sharing information back and forth while avo avoiding all the overhead of syscalls. And that's part of where the performance optimizations come in um, with AFXDP. Similar to other interfaces that we've seen appear in the kernel, like IOU ring, you know, they're trying to reduce the syscall overhead uh, in order to optimize uh, performance or accomplish performance. Um, yeah, I guess <laughs> that was a that was a big brain dump there on uh, uh, what AFXDP is. Um, there's lots of little intricacies uh, to it, uh, for sure. And the APIs uh, certainly are not the most um, easy to interact with interact with or take advantage of, uh, I would uh, argue, from a usability point of view. Uh, but the power of flexibility and performance that they bring along is particularly interesting. So if we take a scale of 1 to 10, let's say, um, where the Linux uh, pure networking stack performance is, is at a 1, and the likes of DPDK and BPP are at a 10, um, originally, when AFXDP came onto the scene, what we saw was it was around the six or a seven, but the community has been optimizing um, the drivers uh, pretty intensely and, and the whole path, let's say, uh, to the point where we're about a seven, um, nearly an eight, which is pretty promising performance. Uh, you know, if you're bound to the likes of SROV with your application, uh, you might be willing to spawn another instance uh, and take the slight performance hit versus, you know, um, the complexities of management of uh, SROV interfaces within the context of a Kubernetes uh, cluster. <laughs> well, that's one of the interesting things you, you you've been talking about this that it, it it is quite complicated, but it is it it actually works in a stock kernel. Yeah, you, yep. you don't yeah, need absolutely. a whole bunch of extra things bolted on, which is really cool. I mean, that's why it runs in Android today. You know, eBPF is running in Android, which is, you know, they don't, you, where, where are you going to put a special network stack, stack on your phone, you know? <laughs> I mean, that's, uh, and I think that's been, like, if you've ever had to, like, deliver a product or, or work on a project that, that has to wait on a kernel, up, on everybody to get to a certain kernel version, it's incredibly painful. And it's, it's painful. 
you know and it's painful for the user too like you know i think we've got to get like the the future is you know has to be simple to the user i think that's the the thing like you know we're in the we're in the curve of the hype cycle where you know we're, we're coming out of the trough of disillusionment i think and like realizing yeah. that yeah we can do lots of cool yeah, stuff but the complexity yeah, there's so many different <laughs> parts now. Like, and, and we've iterated, you know, since I would argue since OpenStack, we've iterated and we're starting to refine things down. I think we're getting to a point of, you know, you know, users need simplicity, developers need simplicity, and because the long-term support of any of this is is madness if it's not got the simplicity. You, you, there's there's a handful of people in your organization that can that can actually troubleshoot what uh, you know a handful of the you know well, your top this developers. Is this is the problem, right? This is what I ran into at Cisco was the operations of this, right? And and how do you how do you do this? Because yes, it's amazing stuff for sure, but if it fundamentally changes some of the paradigms of your operations people, all bets are off, right? Problem, and yeah. and a lot of this technology has this problem. And this is what I see. People try to introduce a lot of this stuff into operations teams and they hit these problems because they're like, this is the future, this is so great. And their operations people are like, I have no idea how to operate this or troubleshoot it. And you find a lot of these people that are developing some of this stuff, they don't think through those angles, right? So so, so Miriam, what, what is the operational status of some of this? And is this some of what you're gonna help make better for people? <laughs> I certainly <laughs> hope so. Um, yeah, so look, you know, eBPF is the uh, playing ground for innovation is how I see it today. Uh, you know, if, if um, time to, Time to market is something that's that we that we always always hear called out as one of the most important things for for folks to uh, with their products. And the reality is that uh, when it comes to upstreaming the kernel or to the kernel and making modifications to the kernel, that's a very um, long process. Massive fan of the kernel here, by the way, but uh, it is a long, painful uh, process for for many. Uh, and the reality is that within the context of in this innovation ground, people want to take advantage of the flexibility that eBPF gives you, um, as well as the fact that it's slightly decoupling you from um, fully utilizing uh, or being forced to fully utilize everything that's in the kernel. You know, it's giving you a bit of wiggle room to uh, to do what, you, what you'd like to do. Um, but with that comes <laughs> some interesting uh, problems, you know. Uh, for example, um, privilege. Privilege is one of the main things that uh, we we hear our, our customers talk about, and it's you know I don't want to be running things in privilege mode, and you know the, the the operators don't want me running things in privilege mode anyway. Uh, you know, so how do I how do I um, work around this problem? And uh, with eBPF today, uh, more often than not, uh, you either have to have uh, cap eBPF. Uh, privilege or cap uh, this admin like privilege to to load your eBPF program so from the offset you you've hit a you've hit a bit of a snag right um and you can overcome that challenge i mean that's not a very difficult challenge to do you have an external entity that loads and manages all of the eBPF programs uh that you want that that's actually a better approach anyways right because well, you don't want operators people... have a standard config for their servers and whatnot this yeah. could just get added to that. That exactly. The thing to me, though, that's that's interesting is, I mean, what's the flip side of what you're talking about? You want to go back to FPGAs? That's <laughs> that's certainly not simpler. <laughs> that's worse. <laughs> no, right? and trying to manage them in the in the context of Kubernetes for sure, things get a get a, get quite messy. Right. Um, and like, anyways, you don't you don't want your 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 applications loading eBPF programs, right? Because you don't want people stepping on, st stepping on other people's programs or like there's a bunch of shared resources under the hood that you definitely as an infrastructure, uh, from an infrastructure management point of view, you want to be looking after. Uh, so, you know, being able to separate out things like the AFXCP socket creation from the actual loading of the eBPF program, um, that's that's one thing that we introduced back into the kernel uh, about, I, I'm going to say two years ago now, um, to allow us to overcome uh, at least part of the, the issue of privilege. But it turns out actually that <laughs> that's not the only problem uh, related to privilege. 
Um, sometimes retrieving parts of the EVPF um, configuration maps and, uh, and other pieces of data, they can also be wrapped in privilege. So, yeah. you know, loading the problem is only one, one part of the, loading the program is only one part of the problem. Now the data that you need is also wrapped up in some privilege that you can't access. Um, and specifically for AFXDP sockets, uh, that comes within um, when you try to read this XSK map. So this XSK map is a very simple table, if you, if you want to think about it, that just says if a packet lands on uh, Q1, uh, redirect it to socket X. You know, very simple map. And when you create the AFXDP socket, you just have to insert your socket into that map to say, this is the socket that, uh, that belongs to this queue and redirect traffic here. Um, so kind of an essential part of creating an AFXDP socket. Um, and but that's important, right? So that they, you know, the consumer of that, it's easy. I mean, this is the thing we had to deal with when we were building uh, Vert.io, right? It, that's a similar problem with, you know, dragging the SRIOV channel to the containers. Yeah. And and it's like Kyle's at, you know, picking on is the operational part, like stitching that mess together before that was available. You know, like I swear to God, nobody talked to any operators. They went, who wants to wire this all together? You know, a thousand <laughs> wait, times wait, every day. Did you did you just say that they didn't talk to any operators? It's my yeah, shock exactly. face. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, that never it's, happens, right? It's 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 hard, right? Because a lot of that operation stuff is not it, it, you know, it's like what, you know, it's, it's the difficult stuff. It's maybe it's not as exciting as just. It's the most difficult tech. stuff. That's the it network. is the most two difficult. Of us, two of us that are here have run yeah. networks, you know, before. And it's, yeah. it's that part that like really rains on the parade every time. I swear to yeah. God. Yeah. And know? more often than not, I think that the, the proposal that I hear is, why don't you just use an init container? It's fine. It can run in privileged mode and it can disappear. And you're like, um, okay, well, I guess, you know, that, that's potentially a solution. But the reality is that with these <laughs> XSK uh, maps specifically, um, the, the running, the process that loaded the VPF program and the running process that wants to create an AFXDP socket actually have to communicate while they're both running. <laughs> yep, yep. Uh, so you can't just have something that runs to completion and, and disappears because the context of that XSK map it's is gone. lost or gone, you know. Yep. Um, so now you're down to old school. Okay, so I want to send a file descriptor from um, one place to another. What do I do? But well, luckily, the Linux kernel comes to the rescue, you know, Unix domain sockets and send message. Absolutely mm -hmm. awesome. But now you're constantly having to have, uh, you know, interconnections from your pods or containers to your external entity that loads your eBPF program to share, uh, you know, this file descriptor for uh, a map it's that you need to create fun, a socket. Yeah. You know. It's, oh, it's yeah. not the worst, <laughs> but well, I mean, uh, yes. Thing, one thing that, that, you know, that, that whole external configuration, everything, we, we had Vinny on last week. I mean, security is, is, a, is a thing, <laughs> you know, <and> that's, <laughs> that's another thing to configure, you know, that whole, yeah. you know, but the, the, the simplification I think is really powerful. Is it? Yeah, for sure. It just makes it but work. Like, you know, it just works. Yeah. But like simplifying that that aspect is is not something that's that's difficult to do, and I think if it's done well, um, you know, it has it has a it, it can easily have a very standard API that an application can consume and and leverage, and it's yeah. still decoupled from the underlying infrastructure, um, and that that's that's worth the effort, I think, in you know, um, versus some of the pains of trying to manage everything from the driver all the way up to your your application. Um, so one of the really interesting things that we kind of touched on, but we didn't go into a lot of detail uh, around the power of, uh, and I guess I'm going to touch on this a little bit before I continue on with my rant about the operational problems <laughs> 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 for AFXDP, um, is the fact that AF, an AFXDP socket attaches to a single queue uh, on the NIC or the network interface card, and really what that brings is a really um, powerful capability to uh, efficiently partition your NIC based on queues um, and share those queues directly to your containers uh, rather than being tied to the construct of 
here's a fixed set of cues that I have to use. I'm forced to, you know, I might not use the full width of these cues on my networking device, um, but uh, I have to conform to this and I have to manage whatever comes with that. Um, it's actually, <laughs> it's actually really interesting because um, you can now with the DevLink port API in the kernel partition an arbitrary number of queues uh, into a net dev and represent them as a net dev. So you can pass that up into your uh, pod networking namespace. And the, using the fact that, you know, AFXCP operates on queues, let's say, for example, you have a net dev that has four queues on it. You might dedicate three of those queues to AFXDP in your application, and one of those queues to the Linux uh, kernel. And what that means is you can now really um, make sure that your application is only processing traffic that it needs to process. And the Linux networking kernel can take care of all the other traffic that's coming in and out of your um, your pod, yeah, which kind of in like its own right. Path, you know, it's, yeah, it's exactly. It's interesting as you're describing this, this this is how we design routers like 15 years ago. I mean, this is in iOS and XR. I mean, exactly what you describe, not exactly, but I mean, the, the concepts of, you know, basically you're creating priority queuing, you're creating automatic, and this is the operational part again, you're creating an automatic mechanism that will choke traffic that's trying to hit the kernel, right? You know, and, yeah. and that kind of stuff. And that, all this stuff makes me really happy that we finally getting the getting here in Linux. You know, because we used to have to go rip this stuff out of the kernel and redo it all in embedded land. And um, yeah, I mean, it's it's very powerful too. Like you're saying, the flexibility to say, oh, I've got I've got four queues, but I've got a bigger nick this week. Now I've got eight. You know, and then the the operating system consumers don't care. There's just more. You know, of the same. And you're using the socket interface too, which is a, one of the most powerful things in Linux. That it smooths over all of that stuff, right? <laughs> For the app yeah. developers, well, right? Well, you know, there, there's work to be done on the AFXDP socket. <laughs> it's not perfect. <laughs> no, 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 yeah, I, perfect, I don't get me wrong. But, uh, but definitely, I, I see lots of, well, not lots, but I, I definitely see um, room for uh, libraries that improve on the usability for AFX, even from the point of view of having just a simple buffer manager and so on. But yeah. but absolutely, the power the power is there to interact with a simple socket interface. You know. Can I ask you one question? You you mentioned earlier at the beginning in your intro, um, and it's, I guess kind of related to what we're talking about right here. You you said, well, we've gotten to about seven on the performance <laughs> curve, right? Yeah. What what's left? Like to get it to that level at VPP oh. and the other things could get to. Well, you know. <laughs> Um, part of the part of the difficulty has been to uh, influence the kernel community to allow us to apply thing like apply things like uh, vectorization optimizations for uh, the standard drivers. Um, but more and more so, we're seeing an appetite for for that now. So really, if we can um, if we can fine tune some of the drivers. Uh, in the kernel, I, I think we can we can get to uh, that seven or eight based on um, based on the kernel driver states today and where they can be with some tuning and optimizations. You know, cool. Um, yeah, that's promising. You no, know, it is. It's fantastic to see, and it's fantastic to see uh, the the community rallying around uh, some of these optimizations and, and changes for sure. I mean, it's, it's fewer um, and fewer excuses to not use it is where, we're, where I'm going. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, let me go back to the operational problems. <laughs> back to it, right. Back to um, the work queue. Yeah, so uh, remember we were talking about these queues and how you can, you know, redirect traffic specifically to uh, application queues versus uh, kernel queues. Well, um, you know, it turns out NICs are actually pretty powerful today and they give you all the utilities to let you all do all of that on the actual switched filter in the NIC itself. So so that also needs to be managed by um, your external entity, potentially your CNI. You know, a CNI could, could actually program those NIC filters. Um, the one thing to be careful of, of course, is that um, filters are persistent, uh, persistent across uh, networking namespaces. So obviously, if the CNI adds them, then the CNI needs to clear them as well um, as it's moving a, a networking device from one namespace to the other. Um, 
The last kind of, I would say, major operational issue that I am aware of, there could be more, <laughs> There are more. Is, <laughs> there's definitely more. Uh, is that IF index, um, so this is like a, a unique, well, sorry, actually, I shouldn't say unique because that's part of the problem. Uh, IF index, which is a number that uh, networking or net devs supposed are given, to be unique. Yeah. are supposed to be unique, but they're actually not unique across networking namespaces. Um, only um, in the last few years, I actually think I can, I, there's, a, there's a specific change in the Linux kernel that, that, uh, that changes that. Um, so which means that, um, you know, if you have a physical NIC resource, unlike the virtual VEs that come and go all the time and you don't really care about, if you're actually tracking a resource that's a physical resource, um, then you can't rely on the IF index as um, a representative of that uh, entity uh, yeah, as it moves in ephemeral. and out of different contexts. You yeah. know, usually wraps in a, in, a, in a ring or whatnot, yeah. For yeah. folks that don't understand what IF index is, this came from way back when, like SNMP land, if anybody remembers what that is, as a way, like Miriam's saying, to uniquely identify the the interface, you know, and it it and and typically it's implemented as as a you know as a as a revolving ring, basically of of, of a you know just a number that counts up and wraps, and and what you're saying, like if you reboot the machine. IF index one could be 25 when it comes back. You know? Yep. Not even if you reboot. If you have a, an IF or index, just, yeah. move it into a pod space and, and it comes back and there's something else that already has its IF index, it just bumps yeah. off into just a different. changes it. Yeah. So you can imagine the observability becomes a really interesting <laughs> yeah. exercise Where if you're go? tracking things. <laughs> Well, and anyone trying to use SNMP to monitor this stuff would be really confused. <laughs> that too, right? Where to go? <laughs> You'd be surprised. <laughs> it's still, you know, uh, I, I see, I still see some solutions that try to integrate bunches of different technologies to um, track. Uh, their networking interfaces, but yeah, you'd be surprised. <laughs> but these are like the operational issues that come up that that like a developer doesn't necessarily discover and appreciate. But then like you throw this over to somebody who's got to deploy a thousand of these a week, and then goes, wait a minute, now I've got a number I need to keep track of, but it's it's not a not a unique number, it's not a GUID or something, you know, it's just a integer. Well, and <laughs> and, and and along those operational lines, the other thing. And, and Miriam, maybe you can talk about this a bit. The, the biggest issue that I saw with, you know, with trying to to look at deploying some of these things was people get confused. They say, "Where's my packet?" You know, uh, because they're used to on the host things like TCP dump, right? And and trying to examine and see flows, and they can understand that. And it took us a while to even get them to understand network namespaces. And now we're saying, "No, no, no, the packet comes right off the NIC, and you're not going to be able to see it with those tools. We have to write other tools." Um, oh, and then there's these things called maps, which you can inter interface between, and you need to use those to debug things, and then now you've just lost all of them. And That's there's... really the key. I mean, we were talking yeah. about this, Brent, last, I don't know, on one of the episodes last year about around um, automation. Yeah, yeah. And and how this is really important, you know, yeah. and the, the tooling. Like, you know, so Miriam, like, you know, this is the thing they did at Docker, right? They, they you know, they basically use the nomenclature of Linux tools, you know, with Docker in front of it, right? Docker PS, you know, et cetera. And so it's, I, I think that's kind of where we need to get to with these tools so that you can say, you know, uh, you know, show interfaces, IF status, whatever. I mean, the, the, the standard nomenclature just adds BPF, you know, activity information, you know, or like Kyle's saying, like, where to go? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Where yeah. is it? What is it running on right now? Is it which net? You know, I mean, well, what's it's... actually dropping my packets? Is it is it being dropped by the NIC or is it being dropped by the application trying to yeah. receive it? Um, it? Yeah, no, yeah. <laughs> there's certainly yeah. some really fun uh, activities that have been uh, happening to <laughs> try and figure out uh, packet traces and so on for sure. Um, so recently we've seen a, a, a lot more statistics being added into the AFXCP interface and, and that serves a certain um, purpose and that's good to a certain extent, I guess, but it doesn't help you actually capture the, the packet itself. Um, from a standard Linux interface point of view, or Linux API point of view, I have not actually seen uh, simple tooling that allow you to 
do TCP dumps on, on those type of packet interfaces. Um, with VPP, obviously, you can easily, uh, it has an AFXCP interface today. You can capture your packets as they hit your VPP data plane, for example, and that has some level of, um, of uh, debug that you can actually take advantage of. But it would really be nice to see the, the Linux uh, community catch up on, on that front, just to be able to use the standard um, tool sets, even if they're a shim <laughs> or whatever, <laughs> but still use the standard uh, tooling. Uh, yeah, as long as it shows up, it's, it, that's all people really need, you know. I mean, yeah. that, um, you know, and then we talk about, you know, packet tracing, like you can actually do a trace route inside of the machine now, you know, like it's probably gone here, here, here. Now imagine if you add routing to, to, to this machine that's running, you know, one NIC with BPF. Now I've got four NICs and I can, you know, now I'm back to, well, wow, we built a router again. Yeah. You know? And, yeah, and no, out there it's important to figure know where everything is, you know. Absolutely. Uh, to be honest with you, uh, even the simplest net networking applications uh, can be quite painful to trace packets through sometimes, but um, it's really important that, that that tooling is available and uh, easy to use for sure. Uh, but I think that goes into, uh, I guess, uh, one of the things that I should really highlight, I feel anyways, AFXDP is at the start of its journey. Uh, you know, it's it's not at the middle of its journey and certainly not at the end of its journey. So there's room to grow and improve. There's room for innovation. And I would really encourage people to come and get involved uh, with the community to help it grow in the right direction. You know? So, so Miriam, where, where that's that brings up a great point. Where so how, how can people get involved? Yeah, where do they go and, and, and to get involved? Yes, so AFXDP uh, is actually migrating out of the kernel. <laughs> uh, so there's an ongoing effort to kind of wrap it up in a library, uh, libxdp, so check it out on, on GitHub. Um, always good to partake uh, there where you, where you can. Uh, at the moment, it's, we're still in the kernel, but you know the ongoing effort is to move out of the kernel space uh, to be able to enable some different capabilities that we need uh, alongside uh, BPF. So, BPF, libbpf is also another um, good place to get involved uh, if that's something that people are interested in. Uh, and a Linux kernel, kernel net dev <laughs> mailing list, you know, the old, the old trusted friend. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. Cool. Well, um, thank you so much, Miriam. This was uh, mind blowing uh, as I expected it to be. You are amazing <laughs> at describing some really heavy technical stuff here, so uh, we really appreciate it. Yeah, thank you guys for your time. I really appreciate it too. Um, yeah. Thanks for being with Miriam. Yeah, it was great to have you on, Miriam. Yeah, this is yeah, awesome. So and I uh, want to thank our sponsor, T1 Nexus. Thanks, T1 Nexus. If you need SFPs, head on over. They Give them a call. For our domain name. So, <laughs> That's <thanks>. right. <laughs> thank you so much, T1 Nexus. Yeah, this is great. All right. Well, thanks again, Miriam. Uh, where can people find you? You said Reddit and Twitter. Uh, yeah, I'm more of a lurker on Reddit, I have to admit. <laughs> <laughs> but you can find all? me on Twitter or LinkedIn under my, my name. Yeah. Yeah, you know, okay. can't beat the old, uh, you know, explain to me like I'm five. <laughs> or what is this thing on Reddit? <laughs> Actually, I kind of wish there was a networking equivalent. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> awesome. Cool. All right. Well, thanks, everybody. Have a great evening, day, evening, wherever you're at, and uh, stay safe out there. See you, folks. Cool. Take care, folks.